Hi guys, welcome back to my channel and welcome to beautiful El Salvador. Now, a lot of people have been quite surprised that I've decided to come to El Salvador on holiday and to backpack around here. And to be honest, I think it gets a very bad reputation in the media. Certainly when you Google El Salvador, then you get a lot of articles about the troubles here and the problem with gangs in the city and things like that. But I do think that it's got a very unfair reputation because I know I'm not an expert here, but so far on my travels, I've been having an absolutely incredible time and I've been completely blown away by how nice the people are. So I wanted to share a few of my experiences here in El Salvador and hopefully encourage you guys to come and visit. Now, one of the reasons that I actually decided to come and visit is I bought the Central America on a shoestring book from Lonely Planet and they have a section on each country in Central America and try and persuade you to come to each country selling its best points. And for El Salvador, they literally couldn't have been any more complimentary. They do talk about the bad reputation that it has and like I've also said, they seem to think this is very unfair and could not sing its praises highly enough. Now, when I first arrived in the country, I flew into San Salvador, which on a number of occasions statistically has shown to be one of the most violent cities in the world. They do obviously have a lot of problems with gangs there, but if you're staying in certain areas, then you really shouldn't have any problems at all. Now, I was staying in the Centro Historico, which is a beautiful area. It's near the big cathedral, quite near the central market. There's a lot of really lovely old buildings, a lot of hustle and bustle going on, street vendors, and it's a really nice place. And I also spent some time in Zona Rosa, which is more modern, but quite a trendy area, lots of young people, lots of cool bars, a few boutiques and things like that. And I really loved it there as well. Now, my very first experience when I arrived at the airport, I was waiting for a local bus and I didn't know where to go. And the amount of people that were coming up to me just to ask if they could help. People were asking in English, asking in Spanish, and genuinely just wanted to make sure that I got on the right bus and ended up where I wanted to go. Secondly, people were trying to carry my bags, and I'm not talking about airport porters going out of their way to try and make a few dollars. I'm talking about people genuinely seeing that I was struggling with having a bad ankle at the moment and carrying lots of bags. Certainly when I got onto the bus, people were helping me lift my bags on, making sure I had a seat, and once again, going out of their way just to make sure that I was comfortable. When I was in the city, I was trying to go to Zona Rosa and I actually got an Uber. Uber's really cheap here. It's quite an easy way to get around. And obviously you can follow the route on the app and see where you're going. When my Uber arrived, the driver opened the door and shook my hand. And I've never had that in any Uber that I've ever got in any country. I've never had someone greet me so nicely as he was doing. Uh, he was then making a massive effort to chat to me. And then when I got out of the Uber at the end of the journey, he shook my hand again and then wound down the window to actually wave to me as I walked off. When I was visiting Zona Rosa, then I went to the lovely microbrewery, which is there. And once again, I was really warmly welcomed and one of the staff there spoke perfect English because my Spanish is so terrible, although I do try to speak it. And he asked me if I wanted to have a tour of the brewery. So he took me round, showed me how they brew all different beers, got a few different flavors out for me to try. So I went to visit Republic Irish Bar, which is a rock bar in Zona Rosa. It's clearly a really popular place to go. And the owner there was so lovely. He and his brother were telling me lots of destinations that I could visit in El Salvador, where I might like, how to stay safe. Uh, they even gave me a few free drinks and just really went out of their way to be kind. Now, I've been traveling around the country by bus. There's a lot of local buses and they zip up and down the coast. They only cost about 35, 45 cents to get on. So they're really good value. Um, when I was traveling from La Libertad, past El Zonte to the place I'm staying now, which is near Mizata. Then I told the driver where I wanted to go and I'd said Mizata, but actually Palapa Cabins is slightly past the village there. But when we got to Mizata, everybody on the bus was so keen to make sure that I didn't miss my stop, that the driver pulled over and everyone was turning around, Mizata, Mizata, you've arrived, Mizata. 
because they were all so concerned that I was going to miss my stop. And this was everybody, not just the driver, wanted to make sure that I got off at the right place, which was very kind of them. Yesterday I went to El Zonte. I had a nice day there by the beach, um, went to the sea a little bit, had a few drinks, and then after I'd finished there, I was trying to come back to the cabins and it turned out that I'd actually missed the last bus. It was about six o'clock and the last bus went at five o'clock. So I was stood by the side of the road, hoping to get in one of the collectivos that comes past. So these are either minibuses or usually like a pickup where you climb in the back and they drive along and when you need to get out, you just whack on the top of the cabin and they'll pull over for you. I'd been in a few of these already and I'd always tried to pay for my journey but the drivers wouldn't let me pay and it looks like they're just doing a service to the local people. If they're going a certain way then they'll let you hop in to have a ride with them. So I was hoping that some of these collectivos would come past and I could get a lift back to my cabins. However, I'd been stood there for quite a long time and nothing had come past and then a guy came up to me and asked where I was going in Spanish and I tried to explain to him and it turned out that he had perfect English and he said that he would help me get a lift and he stood with me at the side of the road for at least 15 minutes as we waited and nothing ended up coming past. All the buses had finished and no trucks seemed to be going past this way and about five minutes later eventually a really large Arctic truck came past. I'm talking like 16, 18 wheeler, huge thing came past and he flagged it down, spoke to the guy driving in the cab and asked if I could have a lift. The guy agreed despite not knowing me and I climbed in the truck and was given a lift literally to my door of where I was staying. Even when I've been in the cities, then I've had so many people just coming up asking if they can help. People have really just gone out of their way here to make sure that I'm safe, that I'm having a good time and that I'm getting where I want to be. I'm not saying that you don't have to have your wits about you and equally obviously I'm not an expert on the country but I am just giving my first impressions of El Salvador and how the people have been towards me. On top of the friendliness of the people it's incredibly beautiful. I'm at the beach right now. I'm about an hour away from the Libertad and it's literally just miles of black sand beaches and there's virtually nobody here. There's a few fishermen out at the moment and a few beach dogs, but apart from that, I've pretty much got the place to myself. And there are not many places where you can go and have such a beautiful beach all on your own, which is incredible. So I'm hoping to make quite a few videos about my time in El Salvador. So I hope that you guys will all subscribe. If you've been yourself or if you are from El Salvador, please leave me some comments underneath because I'd love to hear your recommendations. And I'll see you guys soon.